Katie is a graduate student at Purdue in the entomology department. And she was looking at the utility of black soldier fly um, compost. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn it over to Katie. Do you need help? No, I got it. Okay. Yeah, it's good for now. Thank yes. you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about black soldier fly composting and its nutritional viability. So getting right into it, uh, I just want to go over some uh, general biology. So there are four main stages to this insect as it's a true fly. So uh, it looks like a wasp. Uh, it's a wasp mimic, but it is a fly. Uh, so the first stage is the egg, which will spend about three days on average um, working about uh, trying to come out, um, developing. Um, and then for the larval stage, uh, which is the next 18 day period, uh, these, this stage is uh, a detritivore, meaning it eats dead and decomposing organic matter, um, similar to what earthworms do in vermicomposts. Um, and another important thing about this particular fly is the uh, adults do not eat anything. The, the pupae don't, obviously, as they you know, are pupae. Um, but uh, that feature makes them great uh, as it makes them a non-pest in any um, system that they're introduced to. Uh, and the cool thing that I was focused on is this 18-day period uh, where the larvae are developing. Um, and in this stage, they um, are able to acquire a, a high amount of protein and a high amount of fat content. So just to give you some numbers, um, as you can see, we're looking at crude protein and crude fat, uh, and then right beside it is the sample. So the test animal or the um, sample that is being tested for the nutrients, and then the study at the end, uh, if you were interested in looking into the raw data. Uh, so as you can see, black soldier flies uh, will typically have about 40% crude protein in their real bodies uh, for one quart samples, uh, and then they'll typically have above 20% crude fat. So these are huge numbers uh, for their size. Uh, and when we compare that to chicken feed, you can see um, that the standard amounts have around 16 to 22% crude protein and 4 to 5% crude fat, uh, depending on the type of um, feed that you decide to give your chickens. Uh, and this is important to think about because um, you can introduce black soldier fly, larvae, or pupae into these livestock systems to uh, spike those nutrients that they're getting and give them a more diverse diet. So that kind of identifies this first loop here on the left. Um, as you can see, you can feed black soldier fly waste products such as manure, uh, food waste, or plant waste, and then uh, those larvae will develop into a supplemental livestock feed and the whole cycle can, can continue. So now looking at the second half, um, it introduced like that plant waste and the compost that these larvae produce. So here are the NPK values along with the um, total organic carbon from the black soldier fly compost that we were able to generate in the lab, along with a commercially available uh, composted cow manure known as black cow. And as you can see, um, the nitrogen and the organic carbon uh, pretty much double in the amount. So there's a lot more uh, nutrients available in the black soldier fly compost compared to this particular sample of black cow. Uh, and you can see that the phosphate uh, goes up by 101 fold. So there's a lot more nutrients that are available um, with this black soldier fly compost compared to that composted mm -hmm. cow manure. Uh, and you can um, aid in these certain aspects of soil health, uh, so organic matter content, uh, maintaining pH, and adding in those micronutrients through those higher pK values provided by these black soldier fly larvae. Uh, which brings me back to this. Um, so the best place for the system to be introduced, I believe, is in, within um, urban systems because of the amount of waste that is produced um, just by people living by food waste or um, one of the food streams that we had in my study uh, were brewer's grains, so it's what's left over after you brew beer. The black soldier fly loved them and we saw the highest protein content from those, uh, particularly, uh, particular larvae. So um, they're really, really awesome insects 
and uh, I hope some of you decide to work with them in the future. Uh, so yeah, I'm just pointing out the waste streams that uh, black solar fly, uh, by introducing it into the system, um, we're able to give something that previously didn't have a value, uh, a value, and make it um, a closed circular uh, agricultural loop or a circular economy. Um, which brings me to my last slide. Um, I do have a bit up here uh, that I'm going to talk about here in just a second along with several uh, sets of instructions if you are interested in building your own compost bin, along with a husband again for how uh, to raise black soldier fly. So now I'm going to come over here uh, where my bin is. So this is the 18 gallon bin. Um, there are a few key features to this. The first being on this side, you'll see two circular holes. Uh, this is where the ramp will go in. Um, it's important to provide a ramp to black soldier fly larvae um, because during their pre-pupil stage, they'll start to shift in color um, and they'll try and find a drier place to pupate as they need to let their wings completely dry out in order to use them. So that brings me to the ramp. Let me set the microphone down so I can put this together. Uh, so this is what the ramp looks like for this prototype that we developed. Um, as you can see, there are entry holes um, where the pupae will enter. It's placed in the bin at an angle, so it can reach all um, levels of the bin. Um, and it's important to provide this exit hole here so those pupae can crawl out. Um, another important thing to consider when you're rearing black soda flies the humidity levels. <clears throat> so if it's too moist or wet within the bin, uh, the larvae will jump ship, literally. Uh, it's too wet for them and they will crawl up the sides um, before they're ready to. So you have to keep an eye on it. Uh, and the last thing is the lid. So there are two important parts to this. The first being this T-joint at the top. So that's to allow the black soldier fly adults to come back in and lay eggs um, as they prefer to oviposit, which means lay eggs, um, near the scent of their own young. So they're attracted to other black soldier fly larvae. And then the last part that is super important is this egg laying substrate. Uh, you'll see that it's just sections of corrugated cardboard um, clipped with a paper clip and zip tied to the top. Uh, this uh, is very attractive to the black soldier fly adult female as it provides a small opening for them to lay their eggs in uh, and it allows them to drop down into the compost when they hatch. So um, if you're interested in looking at um, the compost that was generated uh, and then the remaining uh, exoskeletons and adult fly bodies that we collected. Both of these can be used as a soil amendment uh, that are both relatively high in nitrogen. So, yeah. With that, does anyone have any questions? Do you know about those numbers of the compost compared to like vermicomposts? Um, so, the NPK value, is that what you're asking? Yeah. So I believe that they're roughly the same. Um, when you generate a compost at home, you'll typically, if you like, do the right brown to green ratio, you get like 5, 3, 4, I believe. Uh, that's the standard one. So I, I believe our composts are very similar to black soldier fly composts in that regard. And then you had a question? It was the same question. Perfect. Yes? And can you feed them the meat and dairy if you get the worms? Absolutely. Um, so black soldier flies are a little bit more hardy and they go through material a bit faster than earthworms do. Uh, and this is partly because they have a harder mouth part and they scrape at the food. Um, however, it is important to keep um, the substrate moist enough for them to be able to scrape because if you just throw them in, in dry material, they're, they're not going to be able to make it. Yes? Why are they called soldier flies? 
That's a great question. They don't do anything to protect you from water. I'm not sure why they're called soldiers. Oh, yes. Do they compete with other insects? Um, from what I've seen, not really. Um, they kind of, the larvae um, can compete with other detritivores uh, in the lab. When the substrate got too moist, we had a mite problem, which is really interesting, and we have to call that colony, but that's a different story. Um, but I would say, if, as long as you're keeping the substrate at a good um, humidity level or moist level, um, the larvae should do just fine, uh, and they shouldn't be outcompeted by anything. What about the adults? They don't eat anything. Um, so the only thing that they're really competing there for is um, like good egg-laying substrate. Uh, and like I said, they um, prefer the smell of their own young or um, they're able to pick up on like fresh composts as well. So you might actually find some uh, in your composts here in Indiana during the, the summer months. So, yes. What's the, so like we you know that flexible flies are to a large really good at processing this detritus, that they're detritivores. What is their ecological niche? What do they exist in nature? Okay. So as a detritivore, the larval stage, um, they are um, recycling those nutrients and putting them back into the system. And the adults are providing, uh, I would say, feed for predators because uh, you know they are really full of all of those nutrients. So. Where are the natives? Like, where can you naturally find them? Oh, uh, yeah. So you can find them in the uh, neotropics, but uh, they're pretty much everywhere at this point. So they're as far down as South America um, and South Africa, and then as far up as Canada and Russia. So, what do you do in the winter? So it depends on how cold the winter gets. So, on more extreme, like Indiana cold weathers, um, they'll typically die out just because it gets a little cold. But over um, like early spring and well, not late spring and early summer. Um, the adults will travel farther north and they'll oviposit and they'll just spread naturally because of dispersion. Anyone else? All right. Uh, so again, if you are interested in being able to feel the compost or the leftover insect bits, you can come up. I also have uh, instructions for how to build your own 18 gallon bin or a 55 gallon bin. And then I also have that husbandry guide. So, thank you.